I... You blew it. This is Weekly Metal Reviews. This time I'm talking about... Well, hi, my name is Zach. This time I'm talking about Trust Pass America Tour, whatever the fuck it is called. I don't know. Anyway, this tour has Battlecross, Amir... I'm trying to think of the actual lineup. It was Amir, Pop, Evil. That one's not right. But anyway, Pop, Evil... And then, Trivium, God Forbid, Kill Switch Engage, and Five Finger Death Punch. Why are you laughing? Bye. Um, anyway, so Battlecross was first. And then, I thought these guys, I listened to like two songs, like before I saw them. And I thought they were pretty good. I wasn't expecting them to be as good as they were. But they put on a really good show, and I was really glad to see these guys open up, because they really started the show off really good. Um, their guitar players are insane. I think they have a really good stage presence. You can tell they're all having fun. The bass player is a fucking beast. I don't even understand how he can do all that shit. Like, just riff after riff, it would feel like your arm would just fall off. Um, the singer is very interactive, and I enjoyed their show. Then Amir came on, and I was, yeah, Amir came on, and they were really just really fun to see. Uh, they played pretty much all their popular songs, like just kind of. They played some stupid ones too, like Children of Cybertron. You think they'd open up with that, but they actually played it like it was a real song. But either way, they were, they were really groovy. This band's fun to see live. I enjoyed them. Um, Frankie Palmari danced a lot, and the guitar players jumped around, and the drummer looked like he was trying really, really hard. Um, I'm trying to think of the exact lineup, but anyway, I'll just talk about the bands. Pop Evil's fucking retarded, I'm not going to talk about them at all. Like, they're just worthless, they try way too hard, they all look like transvestites, <laughs> and I hit their bus just explodes. Um, and then, alright, God Forbid, that's a band I'm trying to think of. This band was really good, their set list was kind of weird, they played a lot of songs that I didn't know, but they did play a few that, were really, that I recognized. Uh, like, T Tyler saw this band a while ago, and if you watched his review, he said, like, this band is just, like, really, really just went under the table for a long time, and, uh, like, they kind of, like, disappeared for a while, and no one knew, knew what was happening to them. But now they're starting up again. They're starting to tour, do all kinds of cool shit. They just released a new album. Uh, but yeah, the first song they opened up this is a new single. I can't think of the name. What is it called? Okay. Tell me what the dream. Yeah, that one. That one was heavy as fuck. They, they, I don't know what tuning is, but it's just slow as shit. And it's groovy, and then it gets melodic, and it's just awesome. But yeah, they put on a really good show. The vocalist is a really good frontman. He's like huge and black, and he's fat, and he has dreads, and he's just really funny. Um, I think his name is Doc Coyle. Just looks like he's trying to rip off Trivium. I swear he wore the same clothes Trivium does in the one music video for In Waves. It's weird. He looks like he should be in the band. Like he looks like the bassist from Trivium. Like exactly like him on stage. It was weird. Um, they have a new lead. Our new guitar player, he does leads. I have no idea what his name is, but it's kind of weird not seeing the older guy in it. Cause that's I saw him at Manifest 2009, and that's just how I remember him. But um, one thing for all these bands, I enjoyed them, but I felt like they were missing something. And uh, right when Trivium came on, the, like the place actually started to feel like a real like outside festival kind of like theme. You just get the feeling like, holy shit, this band's gonna tear shit up. Um, but Trivium just opened up, they played in waves, opened up the little, hit, like, instrumental intro, and then they came in in waves, and that place just exploded. There was probably four mosh pits over the whole entire place. It was ridiculous. Um, I thought, like, all these band sellers, I guess, were kind of weird in my opinion. I, like, I would think that they would play more songs off their, like, more successful albums. Like, Trivium only played one song on Shogun, um, but I still think they'd kicked ass. They're, 
Trivium and Kill Switch definitely made the show. If you, I, I pretty much paid all the money for my ticket just to see 90% Kill Switch and 10% Trivium. Um, they had a really cool stage set up. They had these giant like Trivium tees that were like mirrors and they're like 10 feet tall. And then, but they, yeah, their drum set had a really, really, really good sound to it. Just the way the toms. The snare, the cymbals were perfect. The bass drum was just it triggered so perfectly. That was just the nicest sounding drum set, like one of the nicest I've heard in a live setting. Um, but yeah, then after that, the band I came for. If you watched our channel before, you know it's probably my favorite band of all time. Kill Switch and Gage, they're back, they're touring again. They have Jesse Leach back as their singer. Um, this is the first time I've seen them since their last U.S. American tour, which I saw with Tyler. And that was when Howard left, and uh, Phil Labonte filled on vocals. And that was the last time I got to see these guys. And uh, that, even without Je Howard or Jesse, that was just a phenomenal show. And this show just w was exactly the same. It was so amazing to see Jesse Leach sing for Killswitch, even though he's in a band now. Like, I was used to the kill switch with Howard, and I, was, and I always thought it'd be cool to see Jesse do guest vocals or something. And I, like, just seeing him as a front man just brought me back to, like, 2000, early kill switch era. It's, it was just really amazing to see that. I thought their set list was really good. Even though they didn't play anything off the newer self-titled, I, I thought that was kind of weird. Because there's definitely, there's some great songs off that album, but I still thought the set list was good. Pretty much played all their hits in a new song. Um, it opened up with Rose of Sharon, which is definitely like Wake the Fuck Up, Headbang song. They played My Curse, Holy Diver, End of Heartache, My Last Serenade, which was really cool to see. My Last Serenade was just awesome to see with Jesse. Um, and uh, Jesse hit every vocal, all the vocals that Howard does spot on. Like, you wouldn't, he didn't like mess up or anything at all. He, he just lined up and sank, and it just is perfect. Like, I love new Kill Switch. I love old Kill Switch. This, I just think this band is one of the best bands you can see live, regardless of who their singer is. They just deliver every time you see them. And I, I was just impressed. Like, I said on Twitter, I would pay $200 to see Kill Switch Engage. Kill Switch Engage played an hour and 30 minutes, or two hours. I'd say two hours. $50 per hour, or... Fifty dollars for thirty minutes. I see. Kill Switch Engage paid, played two hours. I'd pay two hundred dollars to see that, hands down. Um, but they had a really great stage presence. Adam D is the funniest fuck you'll ever see. He did all his brutal <laughs> like right before it, end of heartache. Um, they also played This Is Absolution, which is a great song. I've never seen him play that before, and I was just excited to see that. I think that was the second one they played. Um, but yeah, Kill Switch Engage is just a fucking amazing live band. Probably, in my opinion, probably the best you can band you can see live in our generation right now. But to sum it up, I'd give Kill Switch Engage. I'll do ratings at the end, but for now, Kill Switch Engage is a 10 out of 10. Um, Five Finger Death Punch. I'm not really going to talk about them. I'm not really a fan at all. I thought their whole entire like stage lineup was really retarded. Well, they're retarded. They just tried way too hard. Like they had a rectang rectangle that was like blue and did nothing at all, or a triangle that was blue and it changed from blue to red and did nothing at all. It was fucking stupid. Um, they played all their motorcycle songs. <laughs> they said a lot of stuff like they're taking control. And a lot of useless things that made no sense. Um, he threatened to slap me because he said anyone who talks shit on their band is stupid or something along those lines. Uh, pretty much everything that this band did was shit besides the last two songs. I would say, they're, like, the thing I'll admit about Five Finger is Ivan has a really, really good voice. It's just I don't really think he uses it to its full extent as much as it should. Um, the bleeding is like probably, if I had to choose a song to listen to Five Finger, I'd choose that one because I feel like that's a really great song as it is, and they played that, and just ending with that as their encore, which just, that was just amazing, honestly. I'm not a fan of, of this band at all, I hate them a lot, but that song was just amazing to see live. Um, 
But yeah, Five Finger did a real, bunch of really retarded shit. The Bleeding is their only good song they have. And they like motorcycles. Um, so, Battlecross, I give a 7 out of 10. They did really good for openers. Uh, God forbid, I'd give, probably say 6 out of 10. So when I saw them at Manifest in 2009, they just did a lot better than they did here. I don't know if it's just because they've been under the table for a while, they just have a new member. But either way, I'd say 6 out of 10. Amir, I'd give probably 7 out of 10, because they, did, they had a really good sound. They had really good stage presence, but like they had no crowd reaction whatsoever. Like The crowd was just boring for them. Um, Pop Evil, I'll give a gay out of 10, it's sort of retarded. Uh, yeah, then Kill Switch, 10 out of 10. Five Finger Death Punch, I'll give a 4 out of 10. Happy birthday. Trivium. Subscribe. Trivium. Trivium, I give an 8.5 out of 10. They're really good. Subscribe.